Here you go. Do you guys see this harvest? This is absolutely crazy. So this is my third year growing these Hungarian magars. And do you see how beautiful these are? These are gorgeous. So this is a paprika pepper variety. I powdered this down into paprika powder. Um, I think it was last week. I told you guys it got really close to having a year's worth. I am really hoping I can get a year's worth. This is something I use multiple times a day and it's one of my favorite things to grow. I also am going to do a bunch of cayenne powder. So I'm gonna run this through the freeze dryer instead of my dehydrator for the first time to kind of see if I can get it just more powdery because typically with cayennes, I blend them up more into a flake. If I wanna grind it into a, a powder, I typically have to use my mortar. So I'm really gonna be curious on that, but I also got a lot of really beautiful cucumbers uh, this morning as well. So um, I'm gonna have a lot of preserving. I got a few okras, not enough to really do anything with, but this is just the time of year where honestly, I have an endless to-do list. July is one of those months where the garden is exploding and things are coming out and you have to preserve them. And you also have to think about getting things planted. Um, as far as getting another succession of something in your garden goes and also thinking about fall gardening. And there's just a lot going on this time of year, to be honest. So I figured I would take you guys along for my day because I do have a lot to do. So I'm actually going to now, I'm gonna throw these inside for the time being and I'm gonna get my area planted where I harvested all of my onions. I really need to get that done. It's been what, five, six days since I harvested the onions and I still have not got to this because my to-do list has just been crazy. So, but we got a ton of rain the last two Two days we got about an inch and a half of rain so the ground is really moist we actually have more rain coming over the next few days as well which really isn't like the greatest for my potatoes but it's great for everything else I really like direct seeding when I know I'm gonna have rain in the forecast it just makes the germination that much better so I'm gonna go ahead and get this inside I'm gonna get those beds planted I'm gonna do another round of green beans I think I'm gonna throw in a few sunflowers maybe a few more zinnia plants because all of my zinnias are looking so gorgeous this year that I'm just becoming that much more obsessed with zinnias. So I'm gonna plant some more of all of those things. Um, and I'm gonna try to get around to cleaning up my garlic today. It's been four weeks since we harvested the garlic. So I need to get that down off the wall, clean it up and store it down in my basement. I do plan to actually powder out a good amount of that as well. So one thing I did uh, last year during harvest, um, I was not the best about keeping my um, different varieties separate from each other, especially I got really confused. I didn't label them well um, as far as planting goes and some got mixed. And then this year, all of my good cloves, I just threw in a basket of like, oh, this is probably a best one. And then I, I just mixed them all together. So this year I'm actually planning on ordering a good amount of seed garlic. That way I can establish different varieties again instead of having no idea what I have on hand so I'm going to do that and then I also oh I'm standing right here and I completely forgot I really need to get this strawberry um cage off I'm gonna have my husband take this off with me um I really need to get this whole area pruned up the foliage is going just so crazy and I'm starting to get some yellowing because there's just not that good of airflow and I'm getting my second wave of strawberries starting to bloom so I want to help this area out a little bit uh so yeah I have all of that to do today I'm sure I have more than that to be honest but those are all the things that are popping up <laughs> as I think first thing this morning but I'm gonna get this inside grab my seeds and we're gonna sow some stuff in the garden All right, so everywhere I scraped off the mulch is where I'll be planting today. This is actually the last of my summer crops going in. Everything after this will be fall and winter stuff, which is already crazy, but I did wanna show you guys this. So this was the two by four area I mentioned that just the crabgrass took over my garden bed. And this was the area I had the smallest onions. And I always say that onions have shallow roots and they don't like to deal with weeds. These go really deep. So before I do any type of planting, I'm gonna try to get as much of this out as I can. One thing I've been doing regularly this year is whenever I pull a crop out of a space, 
I've been re-adding worm castings to the top and I've also been making sure I've been feeding my plants roughly maybe like every four weeks with this. I am really disappointed. I completely failed in my worm farm last year. I still have it. Um, I just need to get it reset up. It's something that I just keep forgetting that I need to do. So I've just been getting some worm castings from the garden store. But this is something I feel like has just really, really helped the garden this year. Holy crap. That is a massive, massive weed. I really need to go through and weed a few areas outside of this, but I'm just going to top this a little bit, kind of rake it in, and then I'm gonna get to planting. So like I said, I'm going to do another round of green beans. I have green beans there and there with some tomatoes in the middle. And then on the two areas where I have the trellises, my plan is to plant four sunflowers on each one of the corners because my whole goal this year was to be able to have enough successions of sunflowers to where hopefully I can get pretty close to the end of the year with having constant blooms of sunflowers. This has been something I really wanted to do for a few years. Last year I got close, but it really just wasn't that great. So I'm gonna go ahead and plant sunflowers there. And then I think what I'm gonna do, because I really wanna space out the sunflowers really well, um, I'm going to also plant some drumstick flower in the opposing corners. I have them kind of all over and I have been obsessed. I love them. So I wanna play around with drying these and doing dried bouquets with this. So that's one reason I wanna plant that. And then let's see. Oh yeah, and then in the middle areas where you can see I have the tomatoes, I don't wanna overcrowd that space. I wanna make sure I'm planting something a little bit lower uh, because I still wanna have good airflow. So I'm gonna plant two more uh, orange queen lime zinnias. I have literally fell in love with this variety. I think it's gorgeous. I have so many planted throughout the space and they all look different and they are all equally gorgeous. So I'm gonna plant more of that. You have to plant a lot of beans to get a lot of beans. <laughs> that was something I learned very quickly in my first few years of gardening. I also just love having beans on hand because they are a really quick crop. They have typically, if you're doing a green bean versus like a dried bean, they have like a 55 to 60 day window for growth. One thing I've been trying to do differently this year is to not just overcrowd everything. I've been really trying to space things out a little bit further and that seems to be doing so much good for the garden. Another seed packet down. <laughs> so when it comes to my arches, I really like to try to create a lot of visual symmetry uh, when it comes to the space. I don't know why, I just, it makes me happy. So <laughs> let's get out our goldies, our zinnias, and our drumstick flowers. Uh, this space is just gonna be so beautiful with all the yellows and oranges popping up. Ooh. Hmm. No, I'm gonna do all goldies. So the sunflowers are gonna go in the far corners of each bed. The drumsticks are gonna go in the interior of each bed. And then the zinnias are gonna go in the middle of the exterior of the bed. This is the first year I had an iPad. And I will say it's made garden planning and designing the garden really easy because I was able to design one space measuring everything out. And then I can just add layers to the app called Procreate. I drew it in Procreate. And then I've been able to do my spring planting, my fall planting. I can mix match, but I can always have my beds where they're at and I can just erase real fast and add on. It's been the, one of the best things. I love it. And just like that, everything is planted again so i showered because i was muggy and i felt so dirty after planting stuff and since i'm preserving today i want it to be clean so i have all my peppers here i'm gonna actually go ahead and run to my basement real fast and turn on my freeze dryer before i get any of this prepped it needs to pre cool down before i do anything because I am going, it'll probably take me just a little bit more time than it would for me to dehydrate these because I am going to scrape out all the seeds from the cayenne today as well with uh, the paprikas. So I am going to wear gloves. I am going to wear gloves when I process these because these are some hot peppers and I'm not trying to seed out hot peppers with 
out gloves. It is a mess waiting to happen, but I'm gonna get these all cleaned up. I'm gonna get them all chopped up and ready, put on trays, and we are going to do another round of freeze drying today. All right, so I got done chopping and de-seeding everything. You guys didn't need to watch me do a ton of peppers, but I did make sure to lay them where the insides were exposed and I have them all cut up. That way there's good airflow and it can tell when everything is dry. All right, so like I said earlier, I am gonna go ahead and get my garlic cleaned up today. It's been four weeks and everything is good to go. I'm so excited to get this all cleaned up. So I have my basket where all of my garlic is going to go into for the time being. And then I also have a box underneath uh, this table here where I'm gonna throw a bunch of the tops and the roots. So I grow hard neck garlic and I just cut off at the base here. Um, typically with hard neck, you only have about up to a six month shelf life regardless. So I will process this down pretty soon. Um, I will do a lot of garlic powder this year. Like I said earlier, one thing I really want to do differently is I wanna order some more seed garlic and actually make sure that I am sectioning it off correctly um, since I didn't label that well. So either way though, I have some beautiful garlic and I'll probably still end up planting out some of my own garlic regardless, but I do plan to process a good amount of this and order um, some other varieties that I've grown in the past that I really like and all that just to make sure I have them all separated. But I am very excited about today. A day like this typically is a good amount of work. I'm really curious to see how long it will take me uh, since I kind of have more of a system built at this point when it comes to cleaning up the garlic. I'm just going to cut the roots off, brush off any soil that still might be there after all this time and cleaning up. And then we are just going to cut it a few inches from the top. You can braid garlic as well. This is hard neck, so it's a bit harder to um, do any type of braiding with, but mostly you do that with soft neck because again, the hard neck means there's a harder stem in the middle and soft neck is a little bit more looser where it's easier to braid. But I think I'm just gonna sit you guys on a time lapse while I do this. And then I'll show you guys some of the really pretty heads when we get done. All right, all the garlic is cleaned up and ready to go. This was my biggest clove. Look how beautiful. I am going to transfer this to my basement and kind of lay it out. That way it has better airflow than it just being stuck in a basket like this. I think that's one area I could have done a little bit better last year. I did have multiple baskets, but having it laid out a little bit will help with all the airflow. So I'm actually, before I take this downstairs and kind of lay it out, I want to weigh it. The only way I can think of to do this is to weigh myself first. All right, to grab the garlic. Twelve pounds of garlic, pretty much on the dot. That's awesome. I'm just going through all the garlic right now and I am laying everything out in a single layer. I'm putting all of my best bulbs up top and then I'm putting 
some of the ones down here that are a little bit smaller or a little bit looser feeling um, just down below at the moment because those are going to be the ones I'm going to want to use first and also probably powder up. Man, this evening is so gorgeous. The humidity really subsided and it's only like in the high 70s right now, which is unheard of for us in July. Um, but I'm gonna check what the girls laid for us today. All right, let's see what we got. <gasps> wow, okay, the girls never lay in this box. So this is shocking because it looks like majority of the girls <laughs> laid in this box. What a surprise. They typically always lay in one box and it's always this one. It's never this one. So this is actually quite shocking. All right, do we get six or seven eggs today? I think we got six. All right, so I'm gonna get this strawberry cage cleaned up. It's quite the mess. There's crab grass growing in this as well on top of a lot of foliage I need to cut, but I have a handful. I know I'm gonna have a handful of uh, runner plants that have roots. I'm gonna attempt to save them. We'll see how, we'll see if they last or not. I probably need to pot them up in some type of way but we do have a good amount of random stuff in here that we need to get cleaned up. I'm just gonna start on all the plants on the edge and kind of work my way through. But we have a lot of brown leaves we need to get out. There's a bunch of yellow leaves we need to get out. We just need to clean up, give this area a little bit better airflow. There are a few runner plants I'm going to just leave. There were a few spaces that needed to be kind of filled in. Actually, it looks like I have some berries starting to ripen, which I didn't even notice since everything was going so crazy. So much better. I'm not too worried about saving all of these. I'm going to have a lot more runners enter this bed over the next handful of months. And then my game plan is I actually might do a second strawberry cage or I might transfer some of the lesser mature strawberries over to another bed. Was that fun?
All right, so it's the next morning. My freeze dryer got done at like 1.30 in the morning last night and I was not going to wait till, the, till this morning to get it done. So all I did was take out the trays and then blend them into a powder, which I'm really excited about because whenever I have dehydrated cayenne in the past and put it through my blender, I always get a flake, which I've never been opposed to. I like red chili flakes a lot. I've done this for like three years now, but my goal was to always get more of a powder, which this powdered down really easily. I will say, I think I should probably get one. I should probably get a coffee grinder designated for my herbs and spices just so I can get more of a refined powder out of them. But either way, this is very powdery and I'm really excited. It's not like I need a coffee grinder. So that was really cool. One thing I will note is I think with my future batches, I will probably put them in eight ounce jars, just like this that I will probably put an oxygen absorber in because herbs and spices will lose a lot of their flavor really fast and a lot of like their integrity through storage just because they're already grinded up there's more oxygen that can go around the spice and they can go just not necessarily bad but they'll lose their flavor quicker so I'm probably going to put oxygen absorbers in eight ounce jars um, I don't have anything in these I'm currently going to use these so but by doing that, it will keep them fresher longer. And then whenever I'm done with an eight ounce, I can just grab another eight ounce, kind of like when you buy spices at the store. But I also think it'd be really nice to get one of those mason jar um, vacuum sealers. They go on the top of your mason jar and they suck up any oxygen out of your jar. So I think that would be really nice to have on hand, especially with freeze drying. But I'm really, really excited with how these turned out. I can't wait to use this. I was sneezing like crazy with cayenne last night because it's just so spicy. Uh, but either way, guys, I think this is where today's video will be concluded. Thank you guys so much for joining me yesterday and partially today. I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.